quite at the point of the Major League Baseball offseason where I would waste an entire episode on the Brewers picking up Josh Van Meter. But maybe we are. Good morning to you. Good Tuesday morning. I'm Dan Kovacevic of DK Pittsburgh Sports. This is Daily Shot of Pirates. It comes your way bright and early every weekday if you're into football and or hockey. I also offer daily shots of Steelers and Penguins that I will highly recommend after you hear this episode of Daily Shot of Pirates. Yeah, the Brewers picked up Van Meter. The Brewers also picked up Bryce Wilson. And the reason that I want to bring that up is not because either is remotely relevant, because they aren't and they won't be, because neither of these two players is particularly good at baseball. However, if I'm going to rip the local club for conducting summer-long tryouts and picking up every single scrap that gets thrown onto the heap by everyone else, I feel at least partially obligated to point out that others do this as well. In fact, it's not just the teams with the smaller revenues, such as the Brewers and the Pirates, it's pretty much everybody. There's a place for every player who shows even a morsel of potential in this sport. And this is true to the extreme that even someone such as Van Meter, who showed artfully in the 2022 season, that he could be terrible at multiple positions while he was also terrible at the plate, and yet still find another opportunity. And when they get that opportunity, remarkably, in this, the information age where everything is available to you at your fingertips, on your phone, there will still be people who fall for a write-up like this one that appeared in the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel that describes Van Meter, 28 years old in March, has appeared in four major league seasons, spending times with the Reds, Diamondbacks, and Pirates. His work in the majors was a bit below average as he hit 237, but in 49 minor league games, he hit an incredible 348, 429 on base percentage, 669 slugging percentage. Unfortunately, Van Meter hasn't been able to come close to that level of production in the three years. Since then, either in the majors or the minors, he spent most of 2022 in the majors with the Pirates, hitting just 187. He was designated for assignment in September, though he hasn't hit much. In the past few years, here it comes, wait for it, Van Meter at least brings defensive versatility in his time in the big leagues. He's played the outfield corners, every infield position except shortstop, as well as an inning behind the plate and three innings on the mound. This actually made it into the story. Like, this is a good thing. Hang on, hang on. This is my favorite one. It's also possible that his bat gets a boost from the upcoming rules against extreme defensive shifts as he hits from the left side and was shifted in 79.7% of his appearances last year. Oh my goodness. This portion of Daily Shot of Pirates is brought to you by our friends at North Shore Tavern that's directly across Federal Street from PNC Park. It's home of Steak on a Stone. An eating experience, underscoring the word experience. The steak is brought to you partially cooked on an 800-degree stone, and you do the rest. It's a ton of fun, it's a great meal, and it's a baseball atmosphere like no other in Pittsburgh. North Shore Tavern, right across Federal Street from PNC Park. The shift thing, if you haven't noticed, now pops up in everyone's bio. Everyone is about to be rescued. Every miserable hitting career out there is about to be salvaged by eliminating the shift. We've already heard it with a couple of the Pirates signings, specifically with Carlos Santana, how the shift was just his undoing. 
how he can actually hit the ball, but he hits it right at the shift and everything else. Look, if eliminating the shift brings back this many careers, then the Major League Baseball Players Association should pitch in a certain percentage of everyone's salaries to all of the individuals responsible for eliminating the shift. I do think it'll have an impact. I don't think it'll be anywhere near that scope, and I definitely don't think it's going to make a difference with Van Meter. But Van Meter is now a brewer, and the brewers took a flyer on him, and other teams will take other flyers on other very bad baseball players. And they will do so into perpetuity, as will the Pirates. What I want to clarify today is the reason why I became so upset with the way Ben Charrington and his staff specifically handled their taking flyers in 2022. Because they, unlike the Brewers, didn't go and get Van Meter on a minor league deal where they can move him up and down, where they could see if he could recreate that minor league magic from those 49 games four years ago in Indianapolis, where he belongs, if there. And to find out without doing so at the expense of the major league product, at the expense of major league, and I mean that in more ways than one, embarrassment. Because that's what this guy was. That's what 99.999% of Charrington's waiver acquisitions were. In fact, it's what a really, really large percentage of all such acquisitions are. What you can never feel comfortable doing, which you should never feel comfortable doing, as a big league GM, is just rolling them all out there indefinitely, at the expense, at times, of younger players who deserved that major league time, who deserved to, well, even if they didn't deserve it, you had more as an organization to benefit from seeing them, from seeing a Travis Swaggerty or whoever, than you did all this nonsense. The Brewers are going to bring Van Meter into camp. They're going to bring him into spring training in Arizona. They're going to look at him and they're going to see, wow, this is a very bad baseball player. And they're going to send him to the minors and he'll never set foot in the city of Milwaukee, at least not as a brewer. When we come back, J1Q. comes from Eric, and it's extra long, but I'm going to read you the whole thing, because Eric brings up some valid points, valid rebuttals to my recurring arguments related to Brian Reynolds. This is Eric now. All of this feels forced. Reynolds still has three years left of team control and will be playing his age 31 season after entering free agency. That's three years for 30 to $35 million if you factor in his remaining unsigned arbitration years. Last time I checked, he's a dues-paying member of the Major League Baseball Players Association. He has agreed to the system in place. Last year, his camp wanted $4.9 million. The Pirates offered four point two five, and they eventually settled on six point seven five. This after the front office caught the same charge that you levy of them being clumsy. It really seems like people are so caught up in wanting the franchise to spend money that they'd like to see it done no matter how recklessly. Getting too caught up on one perspective like average annual value is akin to overapplying batting average and ignoring WRC+. Plus, I'd like to come car shopping with some of you. When you offer 25000 and the dealer counters at $30,000, i am going to step in and pressure you to pay 37500 
6.75 million this year, then 10 million and 15 million are probably close to what Reynolds is going to get in his final two arbitration years. After getting 1.85 more than what he and his agent had requested last year, seems like they offered him around 45 million more for three more seasons or 15 million a year. Guaranteed, no matter what happens. It's really that clumsy? Really? First off, Eric, I appreciate the thought that you put into this, as well as the knowledge and the background that you clearly have on this subject, which is extraordinary for someone who's not in the industry, presuming you're not in the industry. That said, there's a factor that you're leaving out of this, and it's a whopper, and it's not the car sales theory that you put forth, which is, let's just be dumb about spending. It's not. The pirates like to pretend, and they sound a lot like you when they do, that they're just a normal franchise, that they are free to conduct their business pretty much the way other teams conduct their business, but only in the contexts that they find appropriate. Whereas here is the truth. The Pirates are not that. The Pirates have barely done any winning for four decades now. The Pirates have lost pretty much all of the trust that existed with their fan base a long time ago. And they've completely burned any and all bridges that might have been put up from 2013 to 15. The overwhelming portion of the public here in Pittsburgh, and I guarantee you if there were polling done of this, it would support me, points to such a cynical view of this franchise that most people don't even see them as being serious. Like they see it as a front, as like a money laundering restaurant. So you can take all of those little comparison points and say, well, here's maybe how it would work for the Cardinals or for the Brewers or the Yankees or the Dodgers or whoever else, any of the other 29 teams, for all I know or care. What I know is Pittsburgh, and what I know is how the Pirates have conducted themselves, and what I know more than either of those is how Pittsburgh feels about that. My friend, this team needs to sign this player. If that requires an overpay, here's another news flash: they've got it. They've got this cash, and they don't have really anywhere else to spend it. Want to sign O'Neill Cruz for 20 years or something like that? Okay, go nuts. Maybe he's got a terrible agent, and he'll go along with something like that. But otherwise, what's happened here, what's happened at 115 Federal for the past half decade is that the Pirates have stored away money or spent it or bought yachts or whatever it is, but they've not put it into Major League Payroll. Their reasoning? They didn't have anywhere to put it. All the players were too young. Well, this one's not, and this one is their best player, and the time has come to pay that's got nothing to do with any mathematical formulas. This player needs to be retained. I appreciate the question. Again, I appreciate everything that went into it, and I really appreciate your listening to the show, as I do with everyone else. Let's do another one of these tomorrow. Mm-hmm.